Very good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to our first edition of Distant Scholarly in Focus. As you are aware, we do have our regular, every two weeks once the research, a distant researcher scholarly in focus that we have started uh, since January. And today's the first edition where we are going to be focusing a bit more on other areas, uh, non-research areas. So this platform is made available, so you are able to share your thoughts. So we will, we will have regularly uh, some specified topics for discussion. So today we have uh, an interesting topic for discussion, a new norm in hybrid teaching and learning uh, sharing session. So we have a few speakers uh, that is going to be gathered here today for our discussion. Uh, just some housekeeping announcement. Uh, all your mics have been uh, muted except for the speakers. Uh, they can control their own mic. Uh, so if you have any question, uh, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments or just raise your e hand and then we will unmute you for asking the question directly. Uh, please be informed that this session is recorded. So uh, if you want a copy of this session, you'll get a copy uh, because uh, all of you have registered for this session. So you will get a set of the, of the presentation today. So uh, today's session, uh, we have uh, four panelists uh, who will be discussing this uh, very topic. It is uh, a sharing session. So that is why I need you to participate uh, at the end of the presentation to see some of your own uh, challenges. So we have with us uh, Ms. Lu Yi Lin, who is a lecturer from the School of Psychology. Uh, she has a background in education with a specialization in developmental psychology and one year teaching at the college. We also have uh, Mr. Loga Vijendran, uh, who has been in college with Distance since uh, 2016, and he was previously from Ames University for almost 10 years. He is currently pursuing his uh, doctorate in education in USM, uh, majoring in instructional technology and multimedia. So he is based in the School of Computing and Engineering. Then our third, third panelist is uh, Ms. Kyung Chui Ping, uh, who who is the head of school for School of uh, Pre-University Language and Communication and also a senior lecturer at the college. She has been uh, teaching maths uh, for the uh, A-levels and C students uh, for the past uh, 28 years. And then finally, we have Ms. Tan Pei Shi, uh, who, have, who have an 11 years of industrial experience, uh, including uh, working in uh, Citicorp Trade Services, Intel and SMEs. Uh, seven years of lecturing experience and in, in the areas of management, marketing, and HRM. So these are the, the panelists that is going to be discussing today. It's a lot of lot of discussion, not so much of a presentation, but of discussion. So I do hope you will be able to participate. Uh, so before we start the session, uh, let me baseline the discussion on where we are as far as uh, COVID is concerned and how it has impacted the whole uh, higher education before we, we get into this uh, discussion. Uh, over the last few days, uh, I attended this uh, Malaysian Higher Education uh, webinar uh, hosted by the uh, university, uh, DRB Highcom University. And there were some interesting uh, thoughts that was discussed uh, in that uh, one whole day forum. So I'm putting the thoughts uh, here uh, and then referencing some of, the, some of the thoughts where this discussion came from. So we see uh, this slide here, it talks about the changes that is happening uh, uh, due to the impact of pandemic. If you see the vaccination has indeed allowed us to uh, return to some form of uh, normalcy. Uh, our norm has changed currently, okay? We are learning to, le uh, to live with the virus. So the higher education sector is also uh, impacted. Um, uh, we have resumed, but new approaches in teaching and learning have to be introduced in this new norm. So the focus on online and hybrid teaching uh, has been a key areas uh, of, uh, of, of emphasis in many institutional of higher education, including the schools. 
So teaching and learning, research, conferences, all collaboration have all moved into this hybrid mode. So everything seems to be being, uh, is being pushed towards a digital delivery, including uh, training and consultancy. So that, that is where we are as far as uh, the changes that has happened due to the pandemic. So there is an evolution uh, in the higher education system as our environment uh, continue to change. From normal situation, we have gone into the epi epidemic stage and then became a pandemic stage. And then now we are at the endemic stage since uh, 1st April today. Uh, so evolution uh, can also be seen uh, happening in the leadership roles in various institutions, changes in academic learning models that has become uh, more flexible, more agile and hybrid in name. In, in the way how it is operating. In short, the uh, higher education business model has to change to remain sustainable as we continue to transform in support of uh, the new higher education framework post COVID-19. So the future of higher education now has to deal with the new norm. A lot of changes that is happening we are dealing with the traits of the, the generation alpha, and then you have the generation Z parents. The pandemic has also resulted in students being more comfortable working uh, in isolation and individually. They are comfortably uh, comfortable working on, on screen and texting, but not speaking or being able to interact uh, physically. Customization uh, seems to be the in thing now with the digital environment that we are in social media and e-commerce, uh, big data, all the likes and comments, all this has become fundamental in all our daily lives. Hence, we are globally more connected than ever. So we are moving into a fast pedagogy and life, and, and life skills issues to deal with. So there are a lot of changes that is happening, a lot of challenges that we have to deal in this uh, new norm. So the COVID-19 outbreak has compelled uh, many universities and colleges to immediately switch to the online delivery of lesson. Uh, many instructors, however, have found developing uh, effective online lessons uh, in a very short period of time, very stressful and difficult. And I'm sure all of you have gone through that phase as well. We have also seen there's a lot of more robust in terms of the disaster preparedness in terms of crisis. So now we are more prepared if there's any crisis, how to operate without, with minimum disruption. Clearly, uh, uh, many faculty members and students uh, may not see the, the, few, the, the real uh, value of online learning, despite the fact that online learning has actually been around for many decades, but only now we realize how important it is when we are confronted with this crisis. So during the uh, current uh, uh, pandemic, many instructors and lecturers have had to improvise quickly their online learning solution. Okay, well-planned uh, active online learning lessons are, are different okay, from the emergency online teaching uh, that you all first started to use okay, when you were forced to use it when there was a total lockdown. So some instructors, for example, uh, I, Lecturers may just merely upload the PowerPoint slides or papers into a learning management system, uh, such as like what we do here in Moodle, and ask students to just read them on their own. Uh, any questions were asked uh, asynchronously uh, on the Moodle forum, and then discussion takes place. Other instructors may have recorded their own lectures, usually at least a one hour long lecture sometime, and ask students to asynchronously watch the video uh, the lectures have done and then ask individually uh, individual questions later. So still others talked for more than two hours. Sometimes you say if you have a three credit hours, you tend to talk for three hours if, or two hours. So, uh, so via synchronous video platforms watched by students in their own homes. So that seemed to be the, the approach that has been taken. Although these uh, online methods uh, may be an efficient method of delivering content, they are not particularly effective in promoting uh, active learning and interest. Um, research, this particular research paper that I put up on the screen, all this uh, material that I put up on the screen has uh, links which uh, you will get access to when you get the slide. Uh, 
As one student remarked in this research, uh, sitting in front of, of my computer to watch a two hour live lecture without any active learning, activities such as group work is going to be boring, okay, and not effective in, in my learning. So indeed, without any active learning activities, uh, the, without any inter peer interaction, a fully online course will feel more like an interactive book than an interactive room. So that is why a hybrid teaching and learning is something that is key, which is what we are trying to discuss today. So a hybrid teaching and learning basically means an educational model where some students attend class in person while others uh, join the class virtually from home, okay? So, so you are trying to balance the two groups of students here remotely uh, and also the one sitting face to face in front of you. And how do you use efficiently the various tools to manage this hybrid uh, teaching and learning? So there is this 5E framework that you see on the screen uh, that was introduced uh, in 2020, where it talks about um, what do you do to manage before the class, pre-class, during the class, and post class. So these three levels is, is key when you want to have effective uh, uh, teaching and, and learning. So it is likely and optimal that uh, we'll, we'll move to a blended model uh, moving forward where remote and digital platform uh, will support in-person classroom teaching and also uh, contribute to, in a way, to minimize the teaching workload because you have half of the load done via online. So let us now hear uh, from our four speakers, uh, four panelists, on their own experience in managing uh, hybrid teaching and learning approaches. So let me now first uh, call uh, Ms. Lu Yilin from the School of Psychology to share uh, her thoughts. Thank you, Prof. Wick. Yep, so good evening, all. Yeah, I think um, as we are moving towards endemic, right, the transition would gradually normalize hybrid teaching and learning because like nowadays like consistently you will get students who are uh, tested positive and they will need to change it to hybrid mode or online mode because of that so although when we talk about hybrid teaching and learning right you would think that oh maybe the environment are actually quite similar to our traditional classroom because actually traditional classroom in such a sense that you know there's the presence of uh, lecturers and students at the same time during class hours, okay? And also we have similar learning goals and outcomes, but the activities built for the purpose of students' learning, right, uh, I would say would need a bit more innovation in certain sense. Because similar to online teaching, right, hybrid uh, learning and teaching, when we talk about it, it utilizes technology to kind of create, you know, a variety of um different learning environments for students because some of it will be physically there and some of them will be online, okay? However, when we talk about um, hybrid, right, meaning we are blending both face-to-face -face and online sessions. And when we talk about this, right, it's easier said than done because it's not as simple as just turning on themes during your live sessions. Like, it's not like when you're teaching and you just simultaneously just turn it on and let it go on, okay? Because apart from the needs of like, of course, we will need to have videos, audios, those audios and video facilities that needed to be added in teaching space so that for the whole simultaneous experience to go on, the, those students who are online will be able to actually listen and participate in part of the class activities. Because sometimes is that when you're using laptop, maybe in terms of the, the sound quality that the students get might not be as clear. So this is one of the challenges. But other than that, I think more importantly is basically how can we make this hybrid learning a more cohesive kind of experience? In such a sense, I think the main challenge of hybrid teaching and learning, right, would be actually how to have a more synchronous hybrid learning environment. So what do I mean in this is that how can we, we in such a sense, is not only as lecturers, but also students to be simultaneously participating in classroom and also the virtual environment, because now we are talking about hybrid, it's not only us as lecturer being in the hybrid environment, but also the students as well. So talking about that, right, I think 
um, especially for those who are taking the remote learning one, usually they are the one that sadly will be the one left out. Because most of the time when we are teaching, right, then we tend to, I mean like, whether intentionally or unintentionally, these students are the ones who are left out. Okay, because I don't know if other lecturers have the experience of uh, students that, you know, they prefer typing. But because online platform allows them the, 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 the freedom to type instead of turning on their, their mic. And also, I mean, students do say that, okay, because it allows them to actually think about what they want to write, they can type it out and then they can see whether it's right or wrong rather than just saying it out loud in class. So the thing that happens over there is that you can see the typing going on, but nothing is coming out. While the others in the class are already starting out with their own thoughts about it. So what happens is by the time they come out with it, the discussion has already been led to another direction. So like, for example, like sometimes also when you are bringing on certain classes, right? by the time they finish typing and when you are able to check it, the, the important question might already fly by. So what you can do is only, uh, you can only go back to, 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 to address the question, okay? But I mean, for an effective class environment, that is kind of in, in effective in such a way. So, yeah, so that's one thing. So I think in terms of this, right, it's important for us to look at it as us lecturer taking the role as a mediator in man managing such discussion. So as in either is it like a discussion from online to offline or offline to online. So in such a sense, like sometimes in class, like what I would do is like if certain students brought out certain question in class, I would repeat it again to the question to the students online so that they are aware of it. Because sometimes when we are doing it simultaneously, we forget that we are actually also having an online session. But instead, like, we are so used to those who are in front and then we tend to left it out, those that are uh, you know, attending the, the, the classes online. So then it, it somehow, they, they feel like they are kind of left out or like some of them even enjoyed that, you know, the attention is not as on them anymore. So yeah, so what I do on this, another thing is that I would actually encourage students to actually unmute if they have questions straight away, rather than typing it down. Because while they type down and when the discussion is going in class, there is a delay and a gap over there. And by the time when they come out, the discussion have already uh, been, been turned into a different direction or have lead into something else, okay? So or another thing is that if they really prefer, because some do feel more comfortable typing, like I would say that, okay, maybe if you have important questions, maybe you would text your friends or something that so that they can help you ask it out during class as well. So just in case I miss it out so that it, it happens both way or those that, I mean, some students will attend both, even they are in physical class, they will turn on their themes together so that they will be the ones that say, hey, miss, your, your screen somehow, you know, this, this is not sharing. Because sometimes when you're toggling, you couldn't share. Then they will be the ones that say, okay, so these are the things happening. So I think it's helpful in one way or another. Okay, so with this brought up, right, I think um, it also means that we need to have extra consideration taking into account in another thing, which is how we plan our group activities and group discussion. Okay, so as in, should we blend it together in such a way with online and offline students or should we mix online and online, offline and offline? So in terms of this, I mean, ideally it would be online and offline with a mix, but the problem with that is like not all of the students bring their laptop to class. So most of the time it will be online, we'll be discussing it together, then they will bring it up and discuss it together with offline again as lecturer, as the mediator. So we will be, I will be bringing it up like, okay, so what are some of the discussion points? What did they bring kind of thing? Okay, so also another thing about online learning, another challenge that I would, I face is in terms of, in line with this is the interaction of the students. Because students are so used to online and they, they think that, okay, since I'm online, then I'm safe, that question will be asked. Or because if they are physically in class, right, then, we can somehow prompt them or, you know, when you make eye contact, somehow they, they are like, okay, now my, I will just try to answer a question. But with online is that they have the choice to actually mute themselves to, to, to also uh, to turn off their cam. So in terms of that, that might be a challenge that is similar to online classes. Okay. So 
in terms of that, what I would do is usually I would um, use timers. Okay, so I will share the screen of or name picker. Wait, let me see. So something like this. So I will use name pickers that I will include their names in. So I'll randomly pick. And then, yeah, I would tell them that, you know, this is part of the class attendance because for online one, I mean, for physical one, it would be, they will be there all the time. But online one, I might not know whether you are there or not, or you just turn it on and let it over there. So I will just include their name, just add name, and then you just pick go. So I would say that, okay, so when I pick your name, then you can answer the question. Or alternately, sometimes I will use something like this. Uh, we are, while it's loading. Okay, so where you actually include their name and you set the timer. So this is during break time. So that it is actually a race. I mean, although it looks a bit childish, but students somehow enjoy doing it. There's different of it. There's emoji one as well. So that's the duck one. So the ducks and the emoji actually have their name on it. So after the break, I will say that, okay, the, those who are at the last of the race, the last three, okay, I will pick you to answer the question or, you know, you might give your opinion about what is mentioned inside. Okay, so that's the way of me kind of encouraging them to interact during classes because sometimes if you directly pick, they might, they might ignore you or they might not be there. And then with this on, some of them will take it as an entertainment as well. So they will watch it and say, oh no, wait, my dad, why are you not running faster or something like that? So for them, like they find it entertaining. And then it's also a way for both, uh, something that both online and also offline students, students in class are able to participate. So yeah, so basically that's all from me. So yeah. Thank you, uh, Eileen, for giving us a very good uh, start of the discussion. Uh, yes, uh, I think we can relate to a lot of things that you have, uh, have actually shared with us where the challenge in, in, in trying to get full participation of the remote students and the face-to-face. -face. And as, a, as an instructor, we have to always uh, uh, be aware that there is another group of students remotely sitting. And I think the, the strategy of repeating whatever being discussed is key because uh, most of us do not, uh, in most of our setting, we do not have a mic system where it picks up the sound from everyone. So it's always important if anyone is discussing, it must be uh, uh, repeated. If something is coming remotely, it must be addressed to the, to the group as well. So that is very key when we try to involve both, both the uh, remote students with the face-to-face -face, uh, student. Uh, so the, and then your approach of using uh, all kinds of tools, uh, the name picker, I think this is excellent way of actually uh, making sure the students are participating because my own experience have seen that uh, remote students tend to be a bit silent. They enjoy texting and responding, but you, you pick them to speak or you say, okay, is there any question? No one wants to ask any question. Uh, so that's always uh, the case. Uh, I think it's not just students, even, even among us is the same as well. You don't get many uh, live discussion. But if you give them, provide the avenue for them to give their comment in text, they normally actually will, uh, will provide the uh, comment. All right, so, uh, so we will keep more discussion at the end. So let me now uh, call uh, uh, Mr. Loga, okay, Loga Vijayendran from the School of uh, Computing and Engineering uh, to share uh, his thoughts on the topic. Over to you, Loga. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. And uh, very good afternoon to respected Prof. Vic and uh, the fellow colleagues. Okay, by the way, uh, to say there is about our hybrid teaching and learning environment. Uh, we have been seeing a lot of uh, discussion has been made on this uh, student-centered learning and how it's been converted from a teacher-centered and the current way of teaching approach. However, we are not into this, um, really into this uh, approach until we face the pandemic recently. So uh, most of the institutions have already wanted to employ all this, uh, uh, what we call uh, virtual teaching and learning platforms, but however, they didn't get the opportunity. 
only selected institutions adopted that. And uh, once the pandemic exploded in 2020, that's where we started to realize the need of this environment to capture all this uh, teaching and learning, a new paradigm of teaching and learning. Therefore, uh, but what happened was we, we tried to fully, con we actually we converted into fully online learning rather than hybrid. And then uh, we, we, we have tried to phase out um, for the last two years, we only managed into online, fully online learning rather than hybrid. Therefore, uh, I have only managed to get into hybrid only, only on certain occasion when the student uh, test, tested positive or they face, they had some other issues, close contacts and, that, and, and so on. So uh, in my experience, I, I had uh, managed to uh, resolve this um, hybrid ex experience when uh, the students, uh, one of the students met an accident and uh, had to do both way of te teaching. Where the physical students, the uh, students present, some of them presented, uh, uh, attended the class and then uh, and the rest was at home. So uh, in that context, how do I manage uh, the teaching and learning was quite troublesome because we had to prepare uh, the computers. And of course, we'd be using our computers to share the slides and so on. But at the same time, we need uh, also engage the students at home. So, so, uh, so what I did was uh, we had this, uh, uh, all this, um, which, I mean, online platforms like Zoom, uh, Skype, and Teams. So when we started using, engaging with those platforms, uh, and at the same time, you also need to engage students right in front of you. It's, 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 it's kind of a very difficult situation. And uh, as, well as what Ms. Elin said, you have to make sure the students, students at home are also equally, equally um, getting the uh, sharing as well as the students right in front of you. So, um, nevertheless, uh, I, I what I went through the process. I make sure everyone gets it, but it's very kind of uh, uh, difficult for me to uh, uh, to make sure that they are getting it right. So what I did was. Uh, the one right in front of me is fine, but the one at home. So I keep on, uh, up, I mean, I keep on uh, asking questions, the one at home, and to make sure they are keep on engaging with our teaching and learning. Because when you teach computer subjects, it's not as easy as, it's, it's kind of uh, very uh, difficult because you need to make sure the student really understand because they have never been in the computer background before. I mean, uh, learning programming, and as well as uh, computer subjects uh, before attending Mr. College. So, uh, so in that, I had uh, some, some, some I, I learned, to be honest, I learned and then I, I uh, engaged with them. So in, in, that, in that, I also um, keep uh, asking questions, what else I do? Uh, I keep on asking questions and I also uh, sharing the uh, uh, questions with them and then asking to respond to my, um, usually usually that what we do when it comes to hybrid, because uh, it's fully online is completely different because uh, you only engage with one uh, way of with the students because all of them at home and you engage with them. But uh, when it comes to hybrid, you need to be managed two different uh, way of teaching so that they can, uh, you need to equally uh, make sure them to understand what you are trying to share because uh, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's about fulfilling the, uh, all the lesson plans and also the learning outcomes. So, so, um, so I, I, I had used uh, some uh, collaboration tools to engage the students at home. Uh, but when uh, uh, by employing some uh, online um, compilers, as well as uh, some of the, uh, so that at the end of the class, I also make sure that 
uh, in I also will give them time to to submit all these uh, discussions and also um, the response. I mean the answers. Uh, we are all our we have we have uh, teams and also the other platforms. So they need to respond back to me uh, by within uh, some stated uh, duration. So that uh, once uh, I receive, and then of course I also call them some for further discussion, and um, to to make sure that they really understand the topics that I have covered for the for that period of time. So uh, I also conducted some assessments. We call it, uh, of course, in online. I saw I I I went through, and then I found it's been called assessment 2.0. But in my case. It's uh, just an, an ordinary assessment where we, I share all the questions and make sure they also share their screens to do writing quotes and um, for me to monitor and uh, uh, and to make sure that they don't uh, how say diverted from what they have learned. So um, and and in a way in a way uh, hybrid learning has uh, also um, made made me to understand. The, the need of students in terms of uh, in terms of because it's quite difficult for them to adapt to this uh, complete new, completely new environment because as well as for the educators because um, uh, you need to manage two different uh, two, two different uh, two, uh, group of students one is right in front of you the other one at home so so uh, I, I also did some personal approach where I, I uh, talked to them. I also communicated with them via the uh, uh, chat box in the teams so that they uh, keep on engaged with our uh, with my teaching and teaching process. So um, <clears throat> and then and then at the same time, at the same time, also shared my video because we also do some of the lectures online uh, when when we had this uh, hybrid teaching. So I also shared my video to them so that they had this uh, uh, constant and uh, they can they can always get my videos so that they can watch uh, over and over. And also it applies to the student who attended my class on that particular day. So therefore, uh, they wouldn't miss any of the coverage. Of the topics that uh, we have went through on that part on on those days, so uh, so that the students, uh, of course, uh, they might have some questions when they started watching the videos. Even even those are attended the uh, physical classes, they also face to face classes. They also had some questions uh, after they watched the video, so that it it becomes a, a new kind of new norm, as what mentioned in the topic itself. It's a completely a new norm, not only for the students, for the educators as well. So we we. See here, what happened was when we teach face to face, sometimes the students tend not to ask questions because uh, when you are right in front of them, they might feel comfort uncomfortable asking questions, but only one or two, they do that. But when it comes to uh, allow them to watch videos later on, they have more questions to ask and some or other they are going to have to uh, ask you personally. I mean, they might send you via email or chat box or even they can WhatsApp. Uh, questions so that we know what the what actually the students understand and they don't understand from the topics that we have covered. So uh, it becomes a, a completely a new engagement with the students, uh, and uh, and I I, I manage to uh, resolve a lot of uh, issues after 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 class when we shared videos with them, and. Um, Other than that, other than that, uh, of course, uh, when it comes to this kind of uh, two way of engagement with the students, it's kind of uh, overwork for the educators because you need to prepare, you need to make sure preparing one thing, at, but you also must make sure that both groups gets equal attention. So, so in a way it's uh, going online, fully online is one thing, going face to face is another thing, but mixing them both. It becomes a, a, a different uh, engagement for the students as well as the educators. So this is what I see. And uh, other than that, on the other side, for the students, also they find it difficult when it comes to plagiarisms. Because, uh, of course, 
the students may get information. They might look through some uh, resources online. And when we do the submission, in fact, uh, we have, I managed personally uh, found that some students are copying, 100% uh, copying from the uh, online resources. And I, I, I spoke to them again, and then I said, what I actually want, and the plagiarism happens. So, so it, these things are happening, but uh, you still manage to overcome when, when you started uh, seeing in the other angle of learning, uh, learning environment. So that's all from my side. Rob, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Loga, for your views. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, we have to be aware of the uh, environment, uh, the remote environment as well. Sometimes uh, where the students are uh, engaging with you, sometimes you, you, you are, sometimes we are not aware that they are learning from home and what is the environment at home. Sometimes the environment may not even be suitable. And, uh, and I, I know, uh, as you are aware, that I, I came from the Bahamas and uh, in the Bahamas, we have a disparity of people uh, who have and who do not have. So, so when the technology is there, but you you do not realize that the environment they are in is not suitable for learning. So sometimes that itself become, becomes a problem. So when we conduct a hybrid class, we have to be aware what kind of environment the kids are. Do they have proper Wi-Fi? Do they have proper laptop? Are they learning from the telephone? Is the network uh, sufficient enough? So we have to constantly check on them. Uh, to ensure that whatever we are doing in classroom uh, can be uh, can be shared with them. So the whole idea of recording that you mentioned is really critical as well. I think as we move forward, uh, every lecture has to be recorded. Uh, so this is for the purpose of uh, reinforcing the learning, even for those students who have come face to face, and also for those students who cannot get it clearly because of, of the remote way of it was uh, conducted. So it is key now moving forward to have this recording. If you fall sick, you have this recorded session that can be used even for the following semester. So it is going to be difficult maybe at the beginning, but once you have done this a few rounds, you can make it much better. Uh, so it is important for preparation as, as what uh, Loga mentioned. There's a lot more work for the instructor, no doubt, because you have pre, before the session, during the session, and the post-session. So three levels that you have to prepare. And then managing assessment uh, becomes another different uh, uh, game altogether. How do you manage effective assessment uh, in hybrid? Uh, if you have students here and there, but most cases, uh, uh, it's either it's going to be online assessment or it's going to be a face to face assessment. But whatever it is, you have to think through on your topic. How are you now going to assess the student? How do you ensure the, the authenticity of the whole exam that the student is not able to cheat or Okay, it's going to be open book test. It's up to you. You want to go and copy anywhere, but the way how you set the exam paper becomes a uh, key. I see there's a lot of uh, discussion in the forum as well, where uh, discussion on using quizzes, okay, to reinforce the learning like Kahoot and any other application, uh, using Google Slides and Google Docs, uh, Padlet and Jamboard uh, tools that can be used uh, to engage uh, with students. So there are a lot of tools out there, more and more every day you see a lot more tools that is coming forward. So uh, so, so, there is, so we are able to actually use this tool to help us. So you have to be uh, also uh, uh, aware what are the new tools that is coming from time to time. So try to use whatever that you can. I know there are some, a lot of it are free one, a lot of it with subscription where you, have, you can do more. Okay, so let me now uh, call our next uh, panelist, uh, Ms. Kyung from the School of Pre-University Language and Communication to share with us uh, uh, her thoughts, especially uh, uh, with the 28 years uh, teaching in, at the pre-U level. So how do you manage a hybrid uh, classroom environment, Ms. Kyung? Yeah, all right. Thank you, Prof. Week. So uh, I guess... Uh, I have uh, been introduced uh, as a lecturer who has been teaching mathematics for 28 years. That will tell you how old I am, uh, right? <laughs> so next time, I think I would have, uh, even if there's another session, I would have uh, asked uh, Professor Wick uh, to let me talk first. Uh. <laughs> I'm uh, very old and uh, I would not have uh, the, 
the memory, yeah, I would, my memory is uh, deteriorating and uh, I would not have uh, remembered what I want to talk about. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Prof. Vic, for the introduction. Now, basically, uh, my sharing today is about how I need to transform, all right? Uh, how I need to change uh, my teaching mode accordingly to the change of situation, to the change of time. So hopefully this session uh, can help uh, us here one way or another, all right? So as you know, teaching uh, maths for 28 years is um, something that is too, too uh, natural for me already, right? Uh, so it is just very simple. So in the past, before the COVID-19 pandemic, Right, as any typical uh, maths lecturer, I just uh, go into the classroom, uh, stand right in front of my uh, students, and then start uh, with the whiteboard. I start uh, delivering uh, with the pet marker and the duster or eraser. I start delivering my uh, lectures. All right. However, with the pandemic, uh, with the MCO, all right, I was forced to change. All right, no more physical class. Right, I was very comfortable with my physical class all the time, but suddenly I need to change. I need to transform myself. I cannot teach physically anymore. I need to do online. Alama, okay. All right, that is something very new to me. All right, so left with no choice, I uh, initially uh, opted for Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting. Okay, actually, I'm quite comfortable with the Zoom meeting because I like the whiteboard. Right. As a mathematics lecturer, I need to write a lot. So I like, I really like the whiteboard. Uh, I can write, I can draw, I can change color, change font. Uh, I can even uh, uh, draw with my uh, uh, mouse. All right. Oh, that is good. All right. Unfortunately, and, and the best thing is, I would say, I can re review all the pages which was previously taught. All right. In the lesson, which I cannot do that with a white physical whiteboard. Because once I rub off uh, my physical whiteboard, no space, I have to rub it off. And I cannot refer back to what I have mentioned just now. But with the whiteboard in the Zoom, I can review. I can go back uh, to reflect on a certain concept or a certain formula. Oh, that's very good all right, for me as a mathematics lecturer. Right? Unfortunately, all right, the Zoom will kick me off after 40 minutes. Just imagine, I have a two-hour class. I need to Zoom in. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Seriously, I need to do that three times. Oh, my students uh, get frustrated. All right, it causes a lot of inconvenience. All right, to me and to my, like, uh, to my uh, students. All right, it was really disturbing. So at that moment, I was looking for an alternative. All right, luckily, oh, luckily, this third introduced Microsoft team. Oh, good. I was happy because Microsoft team uh, did solve my problem of zooming in and zooming out, right? But the whiteboard is very messy, right? I couldn't control my whiteboard. I may be typing at one corner and my students will actually see it in another corner. Then when I draw a diagram, the diagram may be overlapping uh, the writing that I'm, uh, I, I have actually presented. So it was really messy. All right, I don't like it. And my students also uh, feels so, feels the same way. So I need to find a solution, all right? So how do I incorporate, I was thinking then, uh, how do I incorporate my uh, uh, light, uh, my Zoom whiteboard into my Microsoft team? Ha ha, see, because I'm not stupid, I got the solution, all right? Okay, so what was that? Yes, I... Now I schedule my class through the Microsoft team, right? And I share my micros, uh, I share my Zoom meeting through the Microsoft team. Oh, it was perfect. I can use freely the whiteboard and I can complete my lectures in two hours smoothly. All right, I can do all the things that I need to do. And besides that, besides that, I can have my lectures recorded uh, my students can review it uh, anytime they want to, if necessary. And I can also 
do a lot of things, right? You may not know. As a mathematics lecturer, I always have this difficulty. I cannot find a common slot to do extra classes. I cannot find a common slot uh, to do consultation because my students are all here mixed, uh, taking all options of uh, subjects. So I couldn't find an, uh, a common slots for them to have extra classes. But with this arrangement, I can actually do a lot of extra classes, consultation through uh, the method, and I can do it during the weekends. I can even do it uh, after dinner and where we are comfortable outside the college uh, time. So that is very good. So, and I have been applying that online uh, uh, method, teaching method throughout the whole uh, pandemic, right? In year, in the beginning of year 2020, 22, uh, in the year, in the beginning of the year, uh, we were lucky because uh, some of our classes have turned physical, right? We can uh, meet face to face and it was good. Uh, we, we were happy, but unfortunately again, uh, everything seems, when everything seems to be okay, then one by one lecturers get infected. Like uh, students get infected. Oh, again, the mess comes, uh, the messy things comes in where we have to juggle with whether to do online or whether to do a physical because it's supposed to be physical on one day and some uh, like uh, students cannot turn up, right? So it was about time. I need to transform again. I need to change again, all right? So this time I have to employ hybrid teaching, okay? So as mentioned just now, I have to cater for my physical students in class and at the same time, virtual teaching for those at home. So how do I manage that? Oh, simple, all right? I sounds a little bit arrogant, huh? Yeah, all right? But it's actually a very simple method, all right? So each time when I go to the class, I just brought along my laptop, all right? And of course, I have my laptop uh, connected to the projector, all right? So with that, I can project uh, my virtual teaching that is through the Microsoft team and my Zoom board through uh, the projector. So my physical students will be able to uh, assess or uh, be in class and follow my presentation right in front of their whiteboard, right? Whereas where, where, where my students who are at home will follow my Microsoft team uh, virtual online teaching. Okay, so this has been effective. And my students are all very happy with this arrangement, right? Because they can actually review the lesson. If they are sick, they can still uh, review the recording. And if they are not too sick, they can actually follow at the time when the physical class is run, right? Now you may be wondering, how do I assess their work, all right? In, since mathematics is something that you now you need to uh, practice on questions. So how do I assess them? Ah, so again, we have another mode, which is the WhatsApp, all right? I have created the WhatsApp group, all right? So I have also uh, imported that WhatsApp into my laptop, all right? So whenever the students uh, done their work, they will send their work through the WhatsApp. Uh, and together, we will click open the work and see everybody's work and discuss about it. So that's how I run my hybrid teaching. So, uh, so far, my students are very happy with the mode. And when I see them happy, I am happy too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kiong. Uh, yes, I, I, I know when we first started as well using Zoom, the, the free version of Zoom is just uh, 40 minutes. So a lot of institutions, uh, when they first started, they started introducing a education package where I think when they first came out with it, they extended it first for, for more than 40 minutes. And then, uh, then uh, when the, uh, the license expired, then you go back to your 40 minutes. Of course, there are those uh, institutions that have taken up the subscription, then they get the full version. But then, of course, we also have uh, Teams, uh, which is what we are using uh, here. And they, so all these applications have the, uh, the plus point and minus point. If those of you have used Zoom, I've been using Zoom all my life. And then when I came to uh, this third, we 
I, I tried to move myself into Teams. I've used Teams as well, but then I was more comfortable using Zoom. Uh, so in fact, if you notice, even this event is all seem to be in Zoom. All my research events seem to be always in Zoom as well. So I find it easier to manage in Zoom compared to, to Teams. Um, and then the use of whiteboard. Uh, so there are a lot of apps that can help you uh, uh, using the whiteboard. So Teams maybe is not as efficient, but then there are ways to, to work around as what uh, Ms. Kiong, uh, you, you have actually mentioned. So, and then of course using of WhatsApp and all that, I think the challenge, the biggest challenge we always will face is if you have a large number of students, okay, if you have so many students and then everyone is going to be, let's say if you have a, a classroom with, with 25 or 30 students, and then if everyone is going to be posting in WhatsApp and all that, the challenge is you will be overwhelmed as well. How do I manage to make sure that my communication is efficient and fast to this group of students? Because if you have 30 students, it's one person send one message, you already got 30 messages coming in. And then in everyone, if each one have two, three messages, you're going to get 60, 70, 90 to manage during the class. So it can be overwhelming if your student number is large. So, so, so we need to think of how else we can make sure that both the group of students is being served at the same time. Uh, I know in the past, uh, with small number of students, it's easier to manage a hybrid. When there's a large number, then you need to ensure that there's a lot of uh, tools being used to help you uh, to monitor uh, the responses, whether they understand, they don't understand. There are a lot of tools now uh, that is available and, and we need to make use of this tool to help you because uh, uh, you cannot be uh, manually trying to manage this remote student, which can be overwhelming after a while. If you get exhausted, oh my God, this is nonstop. And then uh, there is no... Uh, uh, end time, working time, and 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 uh, none of uh, none class time because even after class time, you're going to get messages until late night. You say you're going to be working, you're going to get non stop. There is no such thing as okay, my class is over, I walk out of the classroom. No more. You walk out of the classroom remotely, people are going to reach out for you, your students are going to reach you at any time, and they expect an answer from you. So, so the work environment have totally changed. So, uh, so that is key uh, as we move into hybrid. Uh, we'll come to a certain normalcy after a while, but it's interesting to see uh, the discussion uh, today here. Um, okay, so let's let's go on to the our last uh, panelist today uh, to to talk to take us through uh, further uh, to see how uh, we are able to uh, to manage this uh, hybrid environment. So I would like to call uh, Ms. Tan Pei Shi to to share with us uh, her thoughts on hybrid uh, teaching and learning. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Profi. And everybody, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, okay. Now, uh, same thing, right? Uh, same as uh, Olga, Miss Lu, and also Miss Kyung, we all face uh, high challenges on conducting hybrid, right? Uh, okay, one of the things that I will consider the most is how to capture both online and classroom students' attention and participation. I think this is a very high challenge for all the lecturers, right? How are we going to capture the attention for students who are in the class? At the same time, we also want to capture the attention of the students who are at home, right? Uh, so this is a challenge. Now, in normal days, actually, like uh, what Ms. Uh, Ms. Kyung shared, right? In normal days, actually, we can conduct easily our lesson easily so i just uh going went to my room right the classroom connect my laptop to the projector to project my powerpoint that's it then start to lecture and i can stand to talk i can maintain my eyes contact with the students i can walk around in the classroom i can go to the back of the room right and talk to the students but when we conduct hybrid when i start to walk around this becoming a problem to us, the flexibility problem. My notebook is placed or my laptop is placed on the table. So if I walk around, my laptop unable to capture my voice, cannot record. So what happened? So the students at home, the remote students, they were lost. They cannot hear my voice, right? In this situation, we have a lack of interactions. Now, so, in this situation, if I keep, con keep continue to talk to the students in the classroom, yeah, we can have a very good 
interaction, but I might forget my students at home. Then what if I change another way, if I come back in front and sit down in front of my computer and lecture as, a, as usual? Of course, I projected uh, the PowerPoint on the projector screen. The classroom, the students, they are all, all of them, they are able to see. Okay, they are able to see. But I'm sitting down, my eyes contact, I will only look at my screen. In this situation, I'm only look at the screen. So in, I'm looking at the screen and lecture like online. Then how about my students who are on, in the classroom? Right, they have a, they might have a feeling of neglected, or they maybe they feel that it's sleepy, or they maybe they feel that it's nothing different from conducting uh, online class. Right, this might be a problem. So when we uh when we teach hybrid class, one of the problem, the major problem that I face is the flexibility of using the laptop. How how can I combine this together so that I'm flexible? I can walk around in the classroom and can interact with the students in the classroom at the same time interact with the student in at home. So in these situations, I have to make use of uh, different uh, devices. So actually, normal uh, whenever I go into a class, I have to log into device. I use two devices in order for me to be mobile. One of course laptop. I log in my uh, notebook, laptop, okay? Connect to the projector, I project on the screen. Using team, directly project on the screen. Then I mute my notebook, laptop. First, I mute my laptop, okay? Secondly, okay, I use my uh, tablet. I have a tablet, okay? I have a tablet. I will use a tablet to log in team as well. We can log in many devices. If you have three devices, four devices, you can still log in. So I use tablet. I use tablet to control, okay? So I log in one using a uh, tablet. If anyone, I think a lot of people may think that, hey, I don't have a tablet. Fine, handphone, right? Handphone still can use it. Today, I also log in to, I log in the Zoom on my handphone as well, right? So in normal days, I was so log in using either tablets or the or handphone. Now, in this situation, I will on my speaker on my handphone. I will on my speaker on my handphone and also the video. Then I just show my student in the classroom. Oh, I show my student who are at home. Okay, now let you see what happened in the classroom, right? Using a camera on a handphone to show them oh, what happened. These are all your friends who are sitting at in the class. After that, I will close the video. That's because you're on. In this situation, I can speak. I can walk around in the classroom. I no need to stand or sit down in front of table. Secondly, I open my PowerPoint on my handphone. I open my PowerPoint on my handphone. I share my PowerPoint in the team. Okay? So my students in the class, they are able to see my PowerPoint on the projector screen. And my students who are at home, they are also able to see my PowerPoint at, uh, at home as well. So in this situation, along in the classroom, I can move out, I can walk around. Then at the same time, I just flip through my PowerPoint, right, on my home. Then I no need to go back and sit in front of my computer. So this is how I use the, either you can use tablet or handphone, right, to connect and share the screen. And we can also, uh, I mean, uh, share the PowerPoint together and we are very mobile. Now, in this situation, when I ask question, we have a discussion together with the students. And because the mobile phone is with me, so the speaker is here, right? So when I talk, my student, uh, the remote student, they are able to listen to my voice. They can hear it clearly. Now, whenever I ask a question, to ask a student who are at home, I ask, call the name, let's say, uh, Jason. Okay, Jason, uh, what is your opinion? Can you open your mind and talk? He will talk. Then the voice will come out directly from my handphone. The classroom, the students, they are able to listen. They're able to hear the voice. They are friends' voice, right? In the classroom then i will talk as well and the student also can listen so in this situation 
I mean, the discussion is not only within the classroom or only in the at home or on the computer. Now, sometimes the certain students, uh, they like to type, especially like we also know, a lot of students, they are very quiet, very shy to open the mic. They, they always tell us that, oh, Miss Tan, I, my mic got problem, I cannot open my mic. Never mind, they will type. Then the student in the class, they will become my eyes. They look at the screen, the projector screen. They found that, hey, Miss Tan, uh, Harry is typing something on the chat box. Then I know, right? I know that Harry is typing something on the chat box. Then I turn, read down the question, and discuss at the same time. So this is how I try to make use of the uh, two devices, right? Uh, if you don't have a tablet, you can always use a handphone. But I've, of course, I like to use tablets because I have a stylus pen. I can write on the tablet. It's easier. I can directly write on the uh, PowerPoint. But this one is too small for us to write on the PowerPoint. But you can still use the highlighter or laser, the PowerPoint laser, right? To show to point the important points on the PowerPoint. Now, uh, maybe you might want to ask how to open the PowerPoint on a handphone. Actually, you need three apps. Okay, okay. Of course, one is Team, right? What we are using, all the while, Team is a must for us to conduct the class. Secondly, use OneDrive. I have my OneDrive, okay? Now, I save all my files inside OneDrive. Now, and uh, all lecturers or all students, right? And in this college, you can always use your email to log in OneDrive to save your file inside OneDrive. So we solve one problem, we can keep our file on the cloud, in the cloud. Third, uh, the next uh, software is you have to download PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint, we use PowerPoint 365. However, sometimes you might, uh, I don't know, some of the app, they might ask you to pay for it. PowerPoint, you download because now 365, Microsoft, they also want to earn money. They won't give you a free one. Or maybe the free one, the version is uh, you have a limited function. So you might need to pay for it, but no need. Just use our dessert college email to log in. You can use it with a license already. Why? Because we are using the Microsoft. You have a Microsoft team, we use a uh, OneDrive, then you can use a dessert college email to log in the PowerPoint as well. So download these three files, uh, three apps directly into the handphone. Then you, of course, make sure that you have to charge your handphone, right? Make sure that your handphone with a uh, battery life is enough for you to uh, use. So in this situation, you can actually uh, quite freely, right, to conduct your lesson in the classroom. Now, uh, besides that, other than that, like uh, just now what Profit mentioned about the WhatsApp problem. If we have a discussion about, I mean, like a lot, especially got 30 students, right? When we send a message, it's going to have a lot of issue. I mean, my handphone going to uh, always ringing, right? Alert me about the file. So in this situation, normally uh, we will use uh, for simple one, simple questions, I will use a uh, palette. The palette, actually the student, I will just share screen on the screen and everybody can see on the screen. So and maybe I just share with you the palette that I use. Mm, okay, I share with it. Okay, this is a Kahoot user sound. I also saw uh, uh, this is a Kahoot that I'm using. Uh, just now I also saw the message that uh, Sita also answering one of the questions. How are we going to use a uh, do quiz with the students, right? So those are some of the quizzes actually we can play together with the students who are in the classroom and also those students who are at home. So Kahoot, uh, of course, you you can upgrade to the paid version, but I'm using the free version. The free version, or normally they have a certain limitations. Then after that, uh, okay, let me see how to share. Okay, this is a palette that I'm using, right? So the student, they are able to type all the students. I can see their name over here on the spot. So I just share the screen and give them the link. They just share their message. Uh, I ask them to draw themselves, right? And they just post 
they look at themselves on the handphone and they try to draw themselves. Then they just post, try to know each other. So this is some of the software that you're using to uh, get interact together with them. Uh, okay, now how... Okay, uh, let me see how to stop the sharing. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot find a button to show. Okay, yeah, that's it from my side. So uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for uh, a very good, uh, interesting presentation and also uh, uh, some of the uh, method that you have used, uh, especially using... Uh, uh, two devices or three devices uh, and using the phone. I think that is something that all of us uh, should use. I think most of us uh, will have uh, a smartphone and this is one way of using the smartphone to your advantage uh, because the challenge is always when you do a hybrid class, as I've said at the beginning, uh, you want to ensure that the students are at home and also students in the classroom gets the same information and is able to participate. So using the handphone, uh, uh, as a medium is, is, is one very good example. And I think that's a classic way of uh, managing. Uh, in my own presentation, I've always done that as well, not using the phone, but uh, using a tablet. I always have a tablet with me. So always uh, in my presentation, I will have two screens, laptop with another screen, so that I'm able to share certain things in one screen and do work in another screen. And then I have a tablet to, to manage all the other communication chat and so it, it makes it well. So I think during the period of uh, when we first went into uh, MCO, uh, uh, everyone started investing little by little and said, okay, get some proper lighting. So you have your own. So by now, after almost one and a half years, although yes, we're going back on to face-to-face, -to -face, I think you should have a, like a small mini studio at home where it's all ready and set. Okay, I can do my lecture. You must have that ready uh, because... Uh, yeah, that, that is a new norm. Yes, we are coming back to face-to-face, -to -face, but in the new norm, you're going to have still, you will still have this lot of online uh, session. So it is very key for us uh, to, to do that. Then using OneDrive, using the Office 360 and all those things are there. The apps are already there for us to efficiently run uh, any classes uh, anywhere. You don't need to save everything in your laptop anymore. It just can be in a cloud somewhere like a OneDrive and then you are able to access it using your phone or any app. So there are so many ways when from the session today, uh, uh, we have seen there's so many ways that we can actually work efficiently uh, when trying to, to be uh, effective in our delivery when we talk about a uh, hybrid. Okay, let me uh, see. Uh, uh, I'm going to open the floor now for questions from the floor. Uh, let's see, there's a lot of chats there. Uh, uh, there's a question for Loga. How do you manage uh, uh, on student pleasure, plagiarizing? How do you manage this situation? Hi, Prof. Uh, and hi, Ms. Banu. Thanks for asking. So uh, plagiarism is... Uh, when it comes to online, definitely pleasure, you can expect plagiarism to happen. But at the same time, you also need to curb that. So one of the ways that I use is definitely when you see the, uh, the answers itself, you know whether it's uh, directly from the students or they've copied somewhere, number one. Number two, you also sometimes see the similarities between the submissions. Uh, when you read through the answer, sometimes when you do programming codings, you ended up seeing some similar uh, functions as well as variables and so on. So that's where we met. I managed to uh, capture or, or also found out, find out uh, the, whether the students has uh, copied their the answers or they have took it somewhere. And then at the same time, uh, what I do usually, I'll, I'll talk to them personally. I I I I call, call them or WhatsApp them personally, and then I'll ask them to redo because I know. Uh, course as a lecturer and then uh, you know who who can perform who is not therefore um, I'll talk to them personally to change the answers or on the worst case I, I definitely I'll, I'll, I'll uh, usually I don't be so strict because uh, they also have facing the same situation like us therefore I usually try to talk to them nicely and ask them to change and come up with a better solutions 
especially for the programming and because i i do teach more, more most of my subjects are technical papers therefore um easy to uh, easy to identify if plagiarism happens and of course we do have a turn it in as another um supplementary uh, way to uh, identify plagiarisms so uh, but for at the moment uh, i'm not using it uh, because mine is more on the uh, uh, codings and uh, uh, programming therefore i i ask them to once you identify if the moment you call and talk to them they will admit it so that's the best thing to uh, among most of our students they will admit and they know that we have found the the uh, that what they have done so usually they'll try to redo and then they'll send it back to me and on on the other side if let's say what the reason they get into this plagiarism is sometimes they do not know how to do so it's also giving the giving us the opportunity to identify those students and and to educate or to guide more and uh, to get the better results from that thank you thank you prof thanks loga uh... Yes, I agree with Ms. Tan and also uh, her, Mr. Chin here who have commented that uh, we have to fully utilize the Office 365 because we are uh, subscribed to it. So, so in fact, you have the full uh, Office 365. So you can actually, as long as you, you log in using your distant email, any application that you have, whether it's your uh, tablet or with your phone, you can actually down. You can actually utilize it. So there's no problem at all. So please try to fully utilize uh, the teaching resource that we already have. Okay. Um, is there any any more question? Anybody want to speak? You can speak as well. Uh, let I can unmute everybody. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, anybody wants to speak, you can unmute yourself and share your thoughts. If you have something to say or you want to ask questions, feel free. I know we have, we have 10 minutes past the time. So I open the floor to anyone who wants to speak or say anything, if there's anything. Uh, Profit, Annie Yes. Here. Yes, Annie. I'm actually quite interested and curious when uh, Ms. Yong shared that she's using her Zoom whiteboard and then she's teaching through team. How, how do you do it? Is it that you open two apps and then you're sharing the screen, Ms. Yong? Okay, basically, I will, as usual, I will reschedule my class through my Microsoft team. Lah. So when my students all comes in, in Microsoft team, there's a sharing uh, icon. So I will just share the icon or before I share the icon, I will actually zoom in. So I will actually uh, log in into my Zoom meeting. And then once the Zoom meeting is there, I will open up my whiteboard and then I will share through the Microsoft team. So I just click the icon that is at the bottom of my screen and my whiteboard will be appearing. So that's how I share my uh, whiteboard. Uh, so I'm clever there. <laughs> All right. So I guess it's a very simple thing to do. Lah. I guess many of you would have uh, a thought about that. Huh? But to me, who is actually not very computer savvy, so very uh, technology savvy, so I guess. So that's been sharing function of Teams to share your. Thank you, Ms. Gyeong. I think yeah. my internet lag. Thank you, Ms. Gyeong. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thanks. Um, yes. So uh, there's a uh, comment here. I think it would be good from Elaine. Uh, if we can observe best, uh, observe peer best practice in hybrid teaching. Yes, I totally agree. So today's session was just at the beginning, just to get some some insight of what's happening uh, uh, at the ground, and uh, and I think moving forward we will uh, invite some uh, some uh, experts who have used uh, uh, a high efficient way of hybrid teaching. You so learn from some best practices. So, so we are going to uh, identify a few. Of them to come and, and do a sharing session. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, anyone using Zoom for teaching? Uh, I think Ms. Gyeong started, as you mentioned, you, you still use Zoom, but differently from, from the rest, not directly using uh, Teams uh, because we, uh, at, at this set, we are fully utilizing uh, Teams. 
But of course, we also have uh, the free version of Zoom. Uh, you can actually use it because uh, Zoom, there are features on discussion room, breakout room, uh, as men mentioned here by, by Banu. So, uh, so I think there are, every application has uh, ways to do it. I think within Teams, if I'm not mistaken, also there is a breakout room that you can do. Uh, I'm not so familiar yes. with, as familiar, but I think there is, isn't it? If I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Prophet, yes. Uh, team called breakout room is also quite easy to use. And okay. actually, we can uh, ask the system to randomly uh, yeah the students or we can pick for them okay all right so so most of the apps uh, have this uh, similar features it's just sometimes we, we underutilize the, the apps the apps can do a lot more things but we don't really fully utilize them uh, and I, I hope now that uh, most of us are coming back to uh, fully face-to-face uh, uh, -face teaching we don't forget this online I think we have to continuously use online because if you have realized that if you're efficient in online teaching it actually brings down your load once you have managed it well yes at the beginning it's tough to get everything in order but once you have done it you have done the recording then your job is just to facilitate the student will go in they listen to your video they learn everything then they come back to the class for discussion so you just manage the discussion so i think that the teaching method have to change you cannot be sitting three hours and and give a lecture anymore. It has to be just a short lecture because for online teaching, it cannot be long hours of teaching. The student will shut off. The, the mic is off. The video is off. You don't know what they're doing. They're gone. Then it's okay now. Man. Once the recording comes, I take my time to listen. So, uh, so you have to have the small bits and pieces of videos that is coming out. Short videos. Those of you who attended the training before on uh, micro-credential, you realize that the bits and pieces that you have to do, you cannot be having a long uh, presentation. You have to break it up. Okay. Uh, is there any last message here? Um, this meal co block online use breakout room in Zoom for e teaching tools. Okay, there's some resources there for those of you who wants to use that for their teaching. Uh, so please just take note of that. Uh, let me just copy that. Okay. Okay, so if there is no question, no other discussion, uh, thank you once again uh, for taking your time for this session. I'm sorry, we just passed 17 minutes past the time. Uh, I thought it was a good discussion. So uh, we hope to have similar sessions. If you think there are some interesting session or, or uh, interesting session that you want us to, to discuss on, please uh, feel free to contact my office. Uh, if you think there are some best practice that you know there's some uh, excellent presenter out there who's who has done excellent job in online and and uh, and hybrid teaching do let us know we will be glad to invite them to actually have a have a session to show us uh, what are the things that you can do uh, efficiently uh, when you are delivering an effective uh, hybrid uh, teaching so once again thank you hope to see you all for the next session have a good weekend and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you bye. to all the presenters. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.